Well, we certainly hope everybody had a great Christmas. This is one of our marquee events that we get to do every year on the Community Radio Network, and that is to be a part of the tradition that is the John Jacobs Basketball Christmas Classic here at Cleveland on the Community Radio Network. I am Wesley Outland. Kim Winslow is alongside. Will Chalk is here. Kim, you have a great Christmas? I did. I did. Thank you. Busy, but, but really nice to spend some time with friends and family over the past week. Right back to the grind again. Will Chalk, I ask you the same thing, buddy. Yeah, I had a good Christmas. Um, you know. and, you're, and actually, your Christmas isn't even done yet, right? Yeah, no, mine's not <laughs> done. i got to travel to my grandma's later this week. Well, we appreciate for, uh, another Christmas. Well, we're glad that they're here, and we are glad for those of y'all that are tuning in. We're ready for this matchup that will be the round one opener for the 2022 John Jacobs Christmas Classic here on the Community Radio Network as the Cape Fear Christian Academy Eagles from the North Carolina Independent School Athletic Association get ready to take on the Greater News River 4A Clayton Comets. Of course, we follow them always on CRN. The tip-off is underway. And Kim... For those that might be watching the replay of the video stream, it looks kind of like a Cleveland Clayton game. It certainly <laughs> does. Uh, apparently, uh, Cape Fear brought their white jerseys, as they were told. Um, but Clayton also has white jerseys on. So Cape Fear Christian Academy had to borrow some of Cleveland's jerseys. So it has messed up all the numbers in our roster. And we have done our due diligent best to give you the correct numbers as right now it is uh, of course Cape Fear putting the ball in for two and they are right now up two to zero on the Comets of course the Comets got Sorrell they've got Walters they've got Mitchell still filling in for Kilpatrick you got Eaton you got Grimes the big man and we're ready now to see whatever one can do that's Zig Brock driving up the lane wearing the Cleveland jerseys yeah also I was going to say they both wore white but Clayton was never going to wear Cleveland jerseys in the first place. Oh, never. Hell, no, hell no. <laughs> yeah, <it> was, it was <laughs> never. So somebody had to give up, oh, and it was not going to be Clayton. That's exactly <laughs> that's right. That's sacrilegious. Yeah, that's, that's just definitely. Now Walters brings it down the court. Kim's like, that's just not going to happen. Here, Grimes around the inside, going back around the to number three. Let's see and what he Grimes. could do. The Grimes and a two. two. That was Eaton getting it started there, and the comments are now tied this thing, Kim. And now Zeke. Brock is going to bring it up to court, and Zeke, he's the one, he's the playmaker for uh, Cape Fear Christian. He's averaging 35 points a game. Watching that ball, by the way, my uh, son Nathan Outland on a Christmas uh, week vacation break uh, with me, also doing our video Ooh. camera work. Number 15 trying to drive up the lane, and that was, of course, Wyatt, uh, correction number 15 of Brandon Searles. Going Clayton, Anthony Walters, Walters three, three, got it. Lodge the net also from the... Uh, the shot going in for three. And just like that, it's a three-point lead for the Comets, Will. Yeah, Clayton's coming out on a hot start. They're, I think, 100% on their field goal percentage. And Clayton's coming out on a hot start and shutting down this uh, zoom out. Carry Academy. There we go. And I think they're going to knock it out of bounds here. And we'll have to reset here one more time to start over. Right now, a very quick game getting started with the Five to two score right now. Three point lead for Clayton. Clayton showing a little, little pressure on the inbounds. Going up the drive. There you go. Nice steal by Eaton. Eaton will go back to Grimes. Grimes will go to Sorrell. And SJ will put in a two. And now they're starting to make it a five point lead here. Boy, Kemp, when we were here probably about, what, 20 days ago, we had a very monumental game here. Oh, another turnover. Cleveland That's and Clayton. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know about I all that. I don't think so either. Well, they're going to call they're a foul, like, I guess. Foul on yeah. Eaton, but Eaton didn't touch him. No. Yeah, it's going to be now two fouls of the Comets, none on Cape Fear Christian Academy right now. Oh, I missed who, who got the first foul. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Plus the scoreboard's wrong. It says two. We inbound it. Driving oh. up the lane. Searles goes down. Loose ball, and Andrew Grimes comes up with it. There's Grimes coming up with it for the Comets. They fight under the net for the ball. Sorrell driving, going to Walters. I thought he'd fake a three. He does. He gets that reset. And now Searles around the corner, looking around, going to Grimes. Grimes not afraid to go for a three if he gets a chance to. Mitchell showing his talents in the last oh, game against gets it South by Brock. East and Brock. Number one coming in there, the point guard junior at Cape Fear Christian Academy taking the ball away here. 
Ooh, he's going to go for a three. three pointer. And, and it's good. Made it, Kim. That was from the logo. Wow. No wonder he's averaging 35 points a game. Oh. Foul and a basket and one coming up for Grimes. And that foul is going to be on Cole Godwin. They think they're going to call the foul on 33, Kim. Yep. That's going to be Cole Godwin, the junior center. By the way, quick work by uh, Kim and Will. Quickly to realize that they were wearing Cleveland jerseys, not Cape Fear jerseys. Find it out that we needed to know the correct numbers and rosters, and that's what we're doing here to make sure you know on the radio land as well oh. as those are watching. As Grimes goes for a three-point attempt on the two-point play in the foul. He couldn't get that third point in, and it's going to go right back down to Cape Fear. Oh, nice block nice by take away. Justice Mitchell. Mitchell going now to Harris. Harris couldn't get a drive under the basket. Now he sets up to Grimes and another two. 11 to five, Kim, seven point lead here. Well, again, Clayton showing some pressure, but, and I think they're gonna create the turnover. Oh. Mm, they're gonna uh, say it goes back to Carey Academy. Say it's out of the yeah. Cape Fear. Cape Fear, Cape Fear. Yeah, we'll, Cape we Fear. will be at Carey yeah, Academy later on this afternoon. Yeah, Cape Fear. Academy on our on our brain. Yeah, we'll be on we the air. Mixed at, up. We'll be on the air at 3:45 Eastern time for Coach Marlin Lee and the Lady Comets at the 50th John Wall Holiday Invitational. And there's a shot for two. They call it a two on the number 24 there of Elijah Ellis, the uh, strong forward freshman, putting it in there. All the while, now four-point game, 11 to seven. We're still halfway now into the first period of play. Searles under pressure, got nice uh, coverage with the round number five for the Comets three around him. That's of course good. Thompson shot. That three-point attempt was an air ball by Brandon Searles. Pretty decent crowd here, 11:30 in the morning on a on a Tuesday, by the way. Ready to set up. Grimes. Grimes will go to Harris. Harris now back around the number five of Medlin. Medlin, correction, no. Thompson. And uh, Thompson now getting it along to Grimes. Ball goes in, falls in. Here we go, 13-7, to six-point lead, Will. Yeah, the comments are just coming out in a hot run right now, shutting down Cape Fear on defense and then getting the fast break opportunities on offense with the full court press. Clayton. Wow. Has all the time of possession. No right basket. Now. They say no basket, and they're going to call a foul, I believe, on Grimes here. No, no, on no. 24, Elijah Ellis. But no basket for Grimes. No. The foul was put before he put the ball in the net. Yeah, before he took a shot. That's right. Now we'll see Xavier Lange come in for Justice Mitchell. We've also got Will Kilpatrick in the game now. Yeah, Will Kilpatrick came in for Eaton. And again, Will Kilpatrick's been out sick the last couple weeks. So. That's right. Since the Cleveland game, Kim. Xavier Lange. Xavier Lange for three. His signature spot in the corner. The catch six, and shoot. The 6'1", 165 sophomore puts it in and they're going to call a foul. 16 to so I think they're, they're going to call a foul on Harris for the Comets. Number 12, Harris. That's the third foul. Two now on the Eagles. Comets have three and it's going to pull the ball back to Cape Fear. We're in Cleveland jerseys, but it is the Eagles of Cape Fear Christian Academy. Brian Harris with a nice rebound for the Comets. And he takes it coast to coast. How about that? Finishing strong. Uh, Harris. Comets now have an 18 to seven lead. Three minutes left to go here in the first quarter. And if you now look turn up, over. Yeah, well, there we go. Xavier Lodge got with the it. Steal. Goes to the ground, slides to the floor. He's going to get fouled. Foul be called on number one is Zeke Brock for the Cape Fear Eagles. And I understand we've got a timeout for the first time in the game as well. 18-7. Comets leading early in the first period of the John Jacobs Christmas Classic here from Cleveland. This is how we do every day. If you love them enough to turn off your music and pretend like their music is your music. Ah, oh, this is mommy's jam. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Let's play it again. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. Hey, hon. What you doing with your phone? Do flowers have best friends? I don't know. Hey, look. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Community Radio Network. WCRN 87.9 FM. Clayton Garner, Raleigh, North Carolina, USA. We are CRN. Back after the radio timeout and Comets have possession. 2.45 remaining here in the first period. Shot Whoa. by Grimes. And he's short to the net, but he's fouled Kim. Are they going to call a foul? Yeah. Yeah, they called it. Yeah, two shot foul. Number 21. 21. It's hard to see when they've got their back to us as they signal it over to the. Yeah, it's number 21 of Lathan Wilburn, the uh, eighth grader center. Yeah, they've got two eighth graders on their roster. Yeah. Grimes is good with the first. Well, this is a Christian academy, okay? They're at the North Carolina Independent School Athletic Association, which basically is kind of like uh, we're like Raleigh Academy. We were talking about Cary Academy, where we'll be at this yeah, afternoon. Good, makes the second. And uh, they're not in a the NCHS 2A, the independent schools. And I guess, Kim, you could have eighth graders play Yeah, basketball. you can have eighth graders, but that's it. You can't go any lower than that. Any lower. There you go. I'm glad we clarified that. Another one on that. number 21. Lathan Wilborn. This will send Mr. Grimes back to the line again. Yeah, after he just made the last two. <laughs> oh, my God. 27. And another point added on here. It's a 14-point lead. Hey, by the way, coming up today, 345 Eastern Time, we are live at Cary Academy with coverage of our doubleheader on the Community Radio Network as the Lady Comets are a part of the 50th John Wall Holiday Invitational. We believe Cleveland will come back tomorrow for the men's semifinals. And then, of course, uh, round one for the women is this afternoon against a Team Kim out of New Jersey. Morris Catholic out of Denville, New Jersey, is who the Comets will play. Yeah, nice to see some out-of-state competition as Grimes made that second free throw. He now has 12 points just in the first quarter. And, Will, we talk about how popular the John Jacobs Christmas Classic is. His number 15 is going to go to the line of Brandon Searles for two for Cape Fear. But that John Wall Invitational 50th running is also a pretty prestigious uh, honor to be a part of it. Well, yeah, I mean, you're talking about one of the best players to come out of North Carolina, and you get invited to that, that's where some of the best competition comes. I mean, mind you, the John Jacobs tournament is is pretty good, oh, but, yeah. I mean, you get invited to something special like the John Wall tournament, you can't oh. leave that opportunity. Yeah, ball deflected it, like it out of play it there. It looked like they were trying to maybe do an alley-oop that wasn't really on, on target. And uh, just to catch up, Brandon Searles did make both free throws. 22 to 9, the score. Closing in on two minutes remaining here in the first period. As a little razzle dazzle around to number four of Johnson for the Comets. Looks like Dana Thompson uh, got a Hanson. hand on the yeah. ball and knocked it into the Clayton Comet bench. That was Zeke Brock there. Oh, it's a back the court. Clayton, of course, uh, coming off of a big win. Kim, I think the word you were using is you were also off with uh, your husband, Scott, for the holiday Christmas break was finished, and that's exactly what they needed to do against Southeast Raleigh, and they did that. They played a great game the other night. And it was a conference game. And it was a conference game. two for Andrew Grimes. Gosh, I'm running out of scorebook space <laughs> for Andrew, as I believe that's now 14 points here in the first quarter. 23-9, 5-5 overall in the season for the Cape Fear Christian Academy team. They're 2-0 in the conference in the North Carolina Independent School Athletic Association Mid-Carolina bracket. Clayton obviously in the Great News River. 4A basket does not fall in, but there's a foul. They are currently at 5-5 five five as well. 2-1 in conference play, 5-1 at home, 0-4 oh on the road. Hopefully they can get an away win here tonight, part of the tournament. That foul's going to be on Wyatt Medlin, and that's going to put Xavier Longe at the line shooting two. Xavier Lange, the three-point king, no doubt about it. Uh, every time he steps off and comes in, he likes to go for those deep balls to put him in the basket, uh, no doubt about it, uh, Will. And he has surely, surely showed his talents from uh, the varsity level from JV last year. 
Yeah, the one thing that I see him work on the most is his catch and shoot game. I see him do it all the time in warm ups when I'm sitting in the student section or when I'm in the booth. At halftime, you'll notice he'll come out and he'll um, actually like do work a catch and shoot drill on his own in the corner, and his teammates will just give him the ball back every time he makes it. Driving. Basket oh, nice. and one as number four goes to the line for the comments of Jeremiah Henson. That's good. Ken, that was a nice play for him. Yeah, he got the steal, took it to the basket. That foul's going to be called on Zeke Brock. That's going to be his second. Yeah, um, Jeremiah Henson, the transfer from Word of God, is really putting up some good minutes for the Comets this year. Yeah, Oops. you mentioned Word of God Christian Academy. They're part of the uh, John Wall tournament as well. Oh, I would have imagined. The women. I would have imagined. And we'll follow Searles now, driving. Got pressure by number five, Dana Thompson, for the Comets. He'll swing around. Going for three was, of course, number one. And that was uh, Brock, Brock. And it was no good. And we're under a minute to play, Kim. Comets looking good here on this holiday opening game. Zell launch three oh, to the short cylinder. And Shortman got his rebound back. And he finishes strong with a two. And... Yeah, Wesley, this is one of the games where, I mean, that we've all been waiting to see the comments do. They're actually being productive on offense and exactly defense. Right. Everything's falling for them. Everything falling into place perfectly. 30 seconds to play in the first period. Shot off the rim Ooh. on the attempt by Cape Fear. They get the ball back. Brock comes up with it. Bucks by two. Somehow cleared by Henson. Now they go back to the net. Off the rim, and it's going to be the big man Grimes coming up with the no, rebound. Tyreek Jones no, them has Jones. For, for Grimes. Give yes, Grimes number 22. Rest. Woo. Mm, they called him for a travel, but uh, he dribbled before he stepped. <laughs> Traveling on Henson? Or, or, on or Thompson. Thompson, actually. Yeah. Tyreek Jones, though, coming in the game. Number 22 for the Comets. Yeah, and I would imagine you're going to see a lot of players that don't get a lot of playing time come in eventually in this game. Five seconds closing into the end of the first period. They're going to go for a shot for three. McLam, no, he will not. Brock will throw one up, and it oh. bounces off the rim. That's the end of one. Kim, your take of things, 20-point lead, 31-11 at the end of one. Well, I think, just like Will said, efficient on both sides, both ends of the court for the Comets, and it's good to see. Again, this helps them get warmed up as they get into the meat of conference schedule. So getting some of these backup players in is going to be key as well. Period number two coming up in the opening game with a John Jacobs Christmas classic from Cleveland presented by Uplift Tees on the Community Radio Network. We're back in a moment. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Do flowers have best friends? I don't know. Hey, look. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. It will be Comets with possession. 20-point lead already as we start period number two. Wrapping up the first half. Kim Winslow will chalk. Wesley Outland back here with you. Son Nathan Outland on the video production. Merry Christmas to you one and all. We welcome you back to coverage of the John Jacobs Christmas Classic. Looks like Comets are going to start with their starting Grimes. lineup. And Grimes just picks off, picks up where he left and, off. And Kim and Will, I wanted to reiterate when you were talking about the big men like Tariq Jones coming in or Justice Mitchell or Will Kilpatrick. You got some heavy three men fronts coming in in case something happens with Grimes if he comes out. They're talented under the basket. Yeah, and that's why you want to give some minutes to uh, to Tyreek Jones, get him in there. Again. Oh, oh look at that. Nice. nice work by Walters to Grimes and finished it there, Will. Yeah, I thought at first Grimes was going to go up for a dunk, but he, uh, he changed his mind <laughs> at the end. Just put a simple layup in. Legal screen. Oh, no, they called him on S.J. Sorrell. The winner of this game yep, will face it. either South Garner Titans, who was a team we know in the Greater News River 4A Conference, or the Rocky Mount Griffins, who was a team that we know in the men and women level, Kim. It's very good in this very tournament. Yes. 
And those are the teams that they will either face tomorrow at 5.30. And then, of course, the loser of this game, Cape Fear, Christian, or Clayton, will then move into the, uh, the opportunity to try to make it into the third place consolation tournament. Yeah, they'll move into the, the loser's bracket, essentially play, what, 11.30 tomorrow? That's right. Zeke Brock with temp from about the free throw line. He comes up no good. By the way, these teams very equal of one another. Five and five. Inside the lane going to Mitchell. Mitchell to Walters. He hit a three earlier from a just around that area. And now he fakes and thought about it. Now he'll reset again. Five and one around him. Brock with the help of Medlin. There he takes Shot three. for three. Here he fires. Oh. And it's to the. He was on target. He was just a little yep. short. Now Eaton's going to try for three. And his was long. <laughs> Now we need to get one that's just right. Just come off that rim and came up short there. Now number 12 with the rebound of Scarborough, and he'll drive up, and uh, there's a whistle and a foul yeah. here. And God. Will, you put your head in a face palm. <laughs> Eaton you disagree? pulled his hands back, and then the guy flopped, and they said he pushed him. Eaton literally was like this the whole way down the court. So is that just great acting, you think? Yeah. Number 12 with the free throw line, that's Caden Scarborough, the freshman shooting guard. He'll shoot two, by the way, 35-11. And the first one will not fall in. So, again, as we mentioned, South Corner, Rocky Mount coming up later on this afternoon. They'll play either Clayton or Cape Fear in the second round semifinal game. That's tomorrow at 5.30. Missed them both. Other games this afternoon for the opening game. And oh, and Mitchell just got stripped by yes. Zeke Brock. Yeah, Zeke for Brock in a two, two. Only layup too easy. Yes. We'll mention the bracket during halftime. Yeah, we'll call the game here. Here we go at Walters now on the reset from Thompson. Nice move to Searles. Searles got to Grimes. Oh, and it falls. falls in. Basket and one. And Nathan Outland doing a phenomenal job following the orange rock to put it in the cylinder. Is that 20 for Grimes now? Or at least 18, I think. We're going to call Gavin Harris on the foul. Number three, yes, Gavin that's, Harris. That's 20. Going on 21. 20 points oh, in the first half on Grimes alone? Yeah. Right now. What? How about that for the, the jolly blue giant of the comments is what I call it. Oh, nice. Sorrell got a hand on it, was able to tip there. it to Sorrell. Mitchell. Couldn't get it to Mitchell. Mitchell goes now to Thompson. Right around there, going back to Sorrell. Sorrell will now go to Thompson again, and Sorrell. he'll go for three. Oh. Eh, short. The the Grimes fighting to get the rebound back. Couldn't get it. Picked up by five of Medlin. And I think he stepped out of bounds. No, no, they oh, call, a call a charge on him. Yeah. Oh, my, my. He threw an elbow into Grimes' chest trying to get him off of him. And that's going to be called on Wyatt Medlin. That's his second. So, Cam, you've got six fouls on the Comets, nine on the Eagles. They're in the bonus on the one and one. Shot and Walters three. For three. Yes, it's two now for Walters. On different sides of the spectrum also, uh, Cam, when he travel? put it in there. Oh, timeout. Time out. They're going to call a timeout. 30-second timeout for Cape Fear. One thing for certain is we got a radio timeout. We got some comments that are not afraid to throw the long ball and shoot for three. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. 60 years of fender banging, tire scrubbing, fraudy. That ah, was a very fast timeout. We'll plug Wake County Speedway later as we get ready now to go back to play on the court. 5-15 in the first half, second period, 40-13. Brock driving, basket, and he puts it in. Two. Yeah, 25. Oh, now we're going to see it. So oh, I thought we were going to see Grimes go in for a dunk, but hey, at least got two points defense, out of the deal. Yeah, the defense <laughs> yeah, I seen collapsed his, uh, on him. His big slam he had against Cleveland. Oh, he's fired up for sure. And Brock going Whoa, long. Long Are you oh serious? <laughs> wow. Holy That's smoke. twice that Zeke Brock's done that. The point guard junior. He's kind of stuff curry range. By the way, you hear the bell, but the kids aren't in school today. Oh. 
Another. <laughs> another. <laughs> another. And, and one for the basket Grimes. Basket one, man. Grimes is on fire. 22. 24. 20, 24. 30. No, 20? 22. Yeah, 22. I think. Did he just get They're, two points wait, a minute ago? Yeah, that made it 20. I'm lost. I thought it was 24. I thought no, when this, we were on this. radio timeout, we counted 20 points. Wait. 20. Yeah. He, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. 25. He's on 25. Golly. 25 points for Andrew Grimes in not even the end of the first half of play. And, and here comes you know, Brock Wayne about it for, uh, for not Cleveland, but Cape Fear Christian. And we've seen in those games where they've struggled, they've had difficulty getting the ball inside to Grimes and had to rely on their outside game. And, and so it's good to see them getting it inside and getting those easy baskets. Brock. Oh, oh. Mitchell. Kilpatrick, Kilpatrick good to see him got, back. Almost got the steal there. And Will Kilpatrick definitely been under the weather uh, the last uh, week or so. Feeling better now. And it's hard good when you've been back. out and, and get back conditioned to, to run up and down the court. That's right. Get that rhythm back going. Rocky Mount women and uh, Middle Creek coming up later on this afternoon. 45-18. Oh, that's the next game here part of the tournament. Eight games will be played today. They've been playing since 10 o'clock this morning. This is the second game in the first men's opener game. Cape Fear and Clayton. They will face either South Garner or Again, Rocky Mount. A, Basket drive. Be foul. Oh. Should have been a foul. Ooh, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I thought I saw a hand there too, Kim. Yeah, well, he had two hands. What's the, what's the foul count? I can't see it. Uh, it is uh, six and ten. So in the double bonus for Cape Fear, six for the uh, Comets. So there's six Rock fouls in the Comets? Yeah, there's not going to be another foul called. Harris going. Oh, he Henson. And oh. travel there yep. by Henson. And yeah, Henson just kind of took that extra little step. 3.30 remaining here in the first half of play, second period. Driving now, the Comets check. The highlight player for the Eagles, no doubt about it, for Cape Fear Christian Academy, the junior. For crazy three-point shots, Cam Longs, and he's making them work. And another one up. That time it's a miss. Oh, do they get it back? They the do. Ball. Yeah, they got the rebound back by number five of Medlin. He'll set it to 15 of Searles, and he's in on a two. 45-20, still a 25-point lead here. Kilpatrick, around the horn, going down to Thompson. Thompson will uh, drive, and he gets a foul called. I believe it's on no, one. Looks like, no, they call, no, they call the timeout, actually. It's just going to be a 30-second timeout called by the Comets. Timeout call, 250 left to go here in the first half. The John Jacobs Christmas Classic for the men. CRM. To protect his family from disaster, Steve used his camera phone. Done. By taking pictures of his important documents, Steve can always have them stored online. Learn more simple disaster prep tips at ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. All right, it'll be Comets ball. They'll put it back in play here after the radio timeout. That was Jeremiah Henson going to Kilpatrick. Back to Henson. Kilpatrick again going now. Thompson to Thompson two. on a two. How about it for Dana Thompson. His first two of the game. But he had a really great game the other night against Southeast Raleigh, too, for the Bulldogs. And, Kim, I think, I think it's the word we used in the conference win against the Bulldogs here today as well in the tournament. you got to finish. you got to play strong all four periods. We saw a great game the other night in, in Clayton where they could just establish that across the wave and another shot on the oh, three and it's off the cylinder. Thompson. Thompson in short, but if they could just find a way to finish. They're playing great right now. Uh, well, and that's where you want to stay in a rhythm. Yes, you're, right. you've got a 27-point lead right now. But you don't want to get sloppy. You still want to play your game and, and execute. And, again, we might see some fresh bodies coming in here. Uh, like we saw last year, they brought up two JV players. That's right. Uh, and added to the roster today being uh, Malachi Adkins and Cam Tucker, who, again, with a 27-point lead here in the first half, we may see them 
in the second Well, you half. look at what Mitchell and Xavier Lange uh, did from last year, being Grimes, JV players, and now they're up into yeah. the varsity level. So you're exactly right. Grimes with cleanup duty on that one. Gets the rebound, puts it right back up. Ah, nice footwork there by Zeke Brock up in the air. Puts it in on a two. Closing in on 90 seconds to play here in the first half. Opening in action. Yeah, they had to call that. There's a whistle and a foul. That's Called on, on 32. No, 24. 24. 24. Yeah, okay. Elijah Ellis. And that will put that Grimes was the at the yeah. line. Number 24, Elijah Ellis. The Grimes is back with a 25, 26 points and still adding them here in the first half. 26. Woo! And, Kim, another thing that I say is looking really good here at the start no, of the tournament. No, that's number 28. Oh, the 28 points now for Grimes, but also free throws have been really good for the Comets today. Ready to go here and now. And makes a Look second. Look at another one. I didn't jinx it that time. 29. Xavier Lange has made his two, and Try. Grimes is seven of nine, I believe. At I'll the take line. that. Seven of nine ain't bad. 51-22, especially when you're constantly missing the free throws, uh, Will. <laughs> going for the drive of the lane. That's going to be Sermons short on the three. They're going to close in on a minute remaining here in the first half. You're down to oh, oh, Henson. Boy, he saved it, though. Kilpatrick got the, the ball. And puts it in on the two. Off, off the glass. That's right. Going to close in on a minute remaining here. Sheck about lost the ball. Brock goes sideways. Now shots one up on a three. No short. Rebound comes up with it again. Going to be now Thompson with it. Thompson going inside. Going down to Henson. Henson's with pressure around. We close in on the final minute of the first half. Thompson takes another three. And it's no good. Comes up short. It's Trevor McLam coming up with a rebound now. Going to inbound it right back to Brock. Brock with another <laughs> long three. And that time in. it was short. Whoa. And then Zeke I think gets it's a take steal. away. Yeah. Tried to throw it in time to five of Thompson. No one home. And this ball will fall off the cylinder. No good. And it's the rebound back. Number 12, Caden Scarborough. Loose ball. Tyreek Jones fighting for it. Whistle. They're clock stop. Jump ball. Possession arrow will go to Cleveland. I mean, Cape Fear. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you look on the video monitor, you can see the white jerseys under the Cape Fear Cleveland jerseys that they're wearing. No, I think they just have T-shirts on under. Is it? They just got their white shorts. Oh, they're wearing the white, yeah. And Tyreek Jones comes up with the rebound. Malachi Atkins with the ball. Yeah, ready to finish strong here. Final oh, five seconds, and it could fall in, and that's the half. At the end of one. Yeah, look at that. 53-22, the score. You, you can stay on the clock. As, uh, yeah, we're, we're showing you what it looks like here. About 10 minutes, second half action. Kim will tally the, the book and whatnot before we go to commercial break. Uh, will, your take of uh, the first half. <laughs> um, I mean, I think this is the best game we've seen from Clayton all year so far from the first half. And uh, they're getting everything to fall for him. Kate Fear just can't get down the court, really. The Clayton's full court trap is stopping him from really doing anything. And Clayton's getting a bunch of points off turnovers and fast break points, and Cape Fear just can't compete with it right now. Continue with that momentum, no doubt about it. 53-22, we'll be back and we'll assess the first half. The John Jacobs Christmas Classic 2022 from Cleveland, presented by Uplift Tees on the Community Radio Network. We are back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy, so we don't miss out on what matters. Like that family movie night your daughter can't live without. <laughs> yeah, can't do that. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at getmyfluShot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. 
60 years of fender banging, tire scrubbing, Friday night stock car racing is what built the place they call America's favorite bull ring. Three wide down the back straightaway. Wake County Speedway is a quarter mile paved oval where tomorrow's stars are crowned now under the Friday night lights. I come for the color, I come for the cars, and I come for the crashes. Tickets are just 15 bucks with special discounts available. Family friendly, NASCAR sanctioned, WCSpeedway.com. Green flag in the air. If you can plan barbecues and weddings, you can plan to protect yourself from a natural disaster. Sign up for local alerts, prepare an emergency kit, and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Do flowers have best friends? I don't know. Hey, look. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. To protect his family from disaster, Steve used his camera phone. Done. By taking pictures of his important documents, Steve can always have them stored online. Learn more simple disaster prep tips at ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Ready to tally up things here in the first half of this game. The opening lid lifter for the men of the John Jacobs Christmas Classic. We've got the uh, the book as it stands at the end of the first half of the Comets up 53-22. We're also at the top of the hour. We'll pause for 10 seconds of radio identification. This is the 2022 John Jacobs Christmas Classic Basketball Tournament for the men. Presented by if Uplift Tees on the Community Radio Network. Community Radio Network, WCRN 87.9 FM, Clayton Garner, Raleigh, North Carolina, USA. We are CRN. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent. We hope you enjoy today's broadcast. All right, Kim, you got the book, the tally. What a phenomenal game for the Jolly Blue Giant of the Comets. Uh, Andrew Grimes, but some other Comets were shining as well. Yeah, and as we said, Comets going to halftime leading 53-22 and, and obviously led by Andrew Grimes. He had 29 wow. in the first half. Um, and then follow up uh, behind him was Xavier Lange and then uh, Anthony Walters with those two three-pointers he had in the first half. Uh, foul, as far as foul trouble, Matthew Eaton, um, has three in the first half. Um, again, they're going to have an opportunity to play a lot of players. Fortunately, Matthew Eaton, he's been uh, active uh, on the court, just hasn't scored any points yet. And then for uh, Cape Fear Christian Academy, um, of their 22, they're led by Zeke Brock, uh, no surprise, with 12. So with the crazy threes that yeah, he throws. Yeah, granted, he's <laughs> a little bit under his average right now. We said he's averaging 35 a game. Uh, and he's wow. got 12 here in the first half. Um, and then followed by Brandon Searles with six. They also have a little bit of foul trouble with Cole Godwin. Uh, he's got three fouls. So what is it now? A 29-point lead, 53-22 at the uh, the end of no, the first 31. half. 31. Thir wow, yeah. Hey, and you got to think, too, as well, tournament or not, regular season play, Kim, you get 40 points or more. That clock goes into effect yeah, that's as well, true. the running that's true. clock. So we may have a, a quick second half if the Comets can get out to a quick start here. So what do you do if you are Cape Fear, Will Chalk, to try to get back in this game? I mean, you're down by close to 30 points, uh, over 30 points. Uh, what do you do to try to stay alive here and try to get back in this hunt? Oh, I mean, as we know, Grimes has, what, 30-some points? 29. 20, 29. 29 points, yeah. I mean, I, f I would find a way to double-team him, put pressure on him so he can't get as many shots up and uh, guard the paint a little bit more. I think Clayton's getting too many paint points in the paint. And then just have more people come to the ball. I feel like when they're inbounding it, they've only got one person taking it up the court, no help, and they're getting full court press, and that's not really helping them out. Right. They need to have better ball movement. And I feel like... You know, like you said, they're getting it inside to Grimes, which is what we've been wanting them to do. For Cape Fear Christian Academy, I don't think they have the height to compete with Grimes. You see, when they get the ball into Grimes, Cape Fear Christian Academy, they drop two players on them, and that's why they're getting the fouls. You know, they, yeah. he's been at the at the line um, 
I mean, you can jump up to contest it if you're yes. shorter, but you can't slap at his arm because that's right. going to be a foul because your wingspan is not going to be as big as his. And that's what they're doing. So it's, you're not going to yeah. block his shot. I mean, you're not. You're just not. So you got to hit him, you know, when he gets the ball initially and steal it then uh, before at, he goes up. Looking at the, the bracket here, as uh, we mentioned earlier, this is the opening game. This is game two of the day. But this is uh, game one of the uh, lid lifter for the John Jacobs Christmas Classic men's bracket. Whoever wins this game moves into the semifinal game tomorrow at 5.30, Kim. And that will be between either the South Garner Titans or the Rocky Mount Griffins. Now, we know how good Rocky Mount is. Obviously, for three years in a row, the women have won this tournament. Obviously, we didn't play in 2020 because of COVID. The last two years, it has been Cleveland men that have won the championship. The last time the boys got it done was in 2018. But again, Rocky Mount is a team that, you know, we know we play South Garner in the conference. Would, yeah, would that be a good chance to get an idea of seeing yes, how they are for conference yes. play? It would be a nice time to be able to, you know, it's not a conference game, but it's a conference opponent, and you get a look at them before you actually play them for, you know, when it really counts. You mentioned Cleveland's won uh, the past two years. Yes. I think it was last year in that championship game between, was it the championship game or the semifinals what? when uh, Clayton and Cleveland Clayton and played. Cleveland was for the men's the championship. championship. The, women, that was the, the women was for third place. Well, yeah, the women Best place was, was packed. Yeah, yeah, we remember that one. That was a crazy one for sure. Uh, and we'll never forget the game we did less than, what, 10 days ago. Yeah. That was a great game as well. Uh, probably the best I'd ever seen Clayton hang with Cleveland and then just – you know, the word I think we use is we close it on 90 seconds to the start of the second half. You just got to finish. Uh, We've yeah. got to finish. Clayton's got to finish, Will and Kim. I mean, I only listened to part of the game because I was out for the count. But, um, yeah, I, you were, how, you were how was the game? How was, like, <laughs> how, what was the final score? You know? We, oh, lost, by we three, lost by three. We lost by three. Okay, so yeah. I, think. I remember listening to the end of it, but I don't remember, like, anything that day. Yeah. Uh, a, a very crazy game for sure. And yeah, 74-71. 74-71, yep. Cleveland would get out to a lead. Comets would dig their way back, and then let Cleveland would get back out to a lead. And they they had a shot yeah. at the very end. Again, we were down by three. Had a three-point shot as the buzzer went, and it just went off the front of the three. And, it, uh, and then it felt like that last Monday when we were at Inlo uh, for that game, that men's game. What a roller coaster that was. That one, they that just was, didn't so. finish. They had a yeah. good lead in that game. And yeah, I saw them. Um, in low men's play a little bit earlier in the year against Nightdale when I was there for one of my friends. In low was a pretty good team. Yeah. By the way, were, they were shooting good. They, they didn't have a good record, but it didn't. Their record didn't show how good they were. Or no, I'm well, sorry. That well, was yeah, they have a good record. I'm sorry. They that have was a good record. We got to say, In Lowe's lost like one yeah, game. Yeah, they were like nine and nine and one. We get, I believe. we get ready for the second half in 15 seconds. But Kim, how about the women in the John Wall tournament coming up later on this afternoon? Uh, we're playing a team out of Denville, New Jersey, Morris Catholic, uh, Crusaders, the Clayton Comets. That's going to be a pretty fun one to open up the John Wall Invitational. Yeah, John Wall's tournament is always going to draw good competition. So good to see the uh, Lady Comets By the way, get invited to that. We saw uh, yes. Marlon Lee here cheering on the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. the men. Yeah, I see Mar I've seen Marlon. He co around. Even Coach Lee, John Asmussen, the athletic directors, even though it's the Christmas holiday break, they're still here supporting their Comets. And uh, right before they make the trip to Durham or to Cary, uh, for the uh, the game will be at Cary Academy. Cary Academy is the location of the game, and of course that'll be for the women. That'll be coming up later on this afternoon. My, my son Nathan and myself will be on the call because Kim's got stuff to do, Will's got stuff to do, and we get ready to go back to doing stuff here for the third period. <laughs> oh my gosh! Trying to find a way to save that. <laughs> By the way, I hope y'all all had a great Christmas. Uh, Eaton, Walters, Walters on the three, no good. Rebound, here comes now left to right for the Comets, right to left now for the Eagles. I think that one was just inside the arc, but he couldn't get it to fall. Comes up short on first basket attempt of the second half. That's right. Winner of this game will face either South Garner or Rocky Mount for the semifinal game. Tomorrow afternoon, 5.30, loser. Oh, oh no that's a isolation, third place <laughs> that bracket. Was, that was a statement block. Games later on this afternoon and for the men include Wake Christian in West Johnston. North, I'm sorry, Nash Central in Cleveland will be the nightcap later on this evening. So there you go. And we will cover the men and the women's championship game as we've always done on CRN Kim. 
on Thursday night. And Zeke Brock and gets whatever started Clayton does. Hopefully Clayton will be in KPR the championship. Christian Academy in the second half. That's right. Yeah, it depends on what time they both are, right? 7 o'clock for the women, 8.30 for the men. Yeah, that'd be a little tough. That's well, for almost impossible. For what? To do both. Oh, no, no. We always done the, the women. Oh, and I the thought men. you meant yeah. the Lady Comets. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm talking about for the championship oh, yeah. game for this tournament. Yeah. I thought you meant Lady I think the championship Lady. game for the women is actually on Friday. For what? For the, for the John Wall Invitational. Oh. I think they give them a day off on Thursday. Yeah, I don't know. If, if the bracket's correct. Here we go. There's oh, going to be Brock. Anthony Walters. A whistle and a foul. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe, uh, I think the championship finale for the for the John Wall is on Friday the 30th, I think is what I was looking at. This this holiday on the weekends has just messed everybody up because it don't feel like Monday, or it feels like Monday for me. Yeah, it feels like Monday right now. Andrew Grimes gets the rebound for the Comets. Back inside, going Sorrell. Sorrell now to Eaton. Eaton will go to Walters. He'll fake a three, drive back around the perimeter. Sorrell is open, but he, yeah, there he goes. He sends it to him, shot for three, and it's off the rim. No good. Rebound, Mitchell comes up with it. Mitchell back to Walters. Walters will go to Eaton. Eaton open. Oh, boy. Not letting the ball fall like it did yeah, in the first half, Thomas Cam. Haven't, haven't scored yet here in the second half. Oh, my goodness. He... Who is that, 15? Did he just yeah, throw that 15? Yeah, yeah, he literally took a, a shot sitting on the floor. That's, that's dedication. No traveling. <laughs> and Zeke Brock will come up with a rebound for the – It is. I know it says Cleveland, but it's Cape Fear Christian Academy they're playing. Oh, they're going to get eaten with the foul. That's going to be his fourth. Yeah, that's a that's another thing, uh, Wesley. I see I see Clayton fans walk in and they pause for a second when they see the Cleveland jerseys. <laughs> that's right. And they kind of scratch their head a little bit. This is Cape Fear Christian Academy. They're both were uh, I guess they they brought their their home jerseys. Clayton the, normally white wears jerseys. white. Cape Fear wears white for their home colors, and obviously they couldn't let both home colors be at the same time, and it would be an abomination to the town of Clayton for a Comet to wear a Cleveland jersey. <laughs> and so <laughs> they said, okay, Cape Fear, you're going to draw the short straw, and you got to wear it now instead. So Dana Thompson for three. Nice there, yeah. And anybody knows what I'm talking about between Cleveland and Clayton, that's like uh, the Hatfields and McCoys. It just ain't going to happen. Zeke Brock comes up short for Cape Fear. Wow. Oh, that's going to be fast. That's a, a foul. A little slow yeah. on the whistle, wasn't he? A little, little late. Are they going to call a foul? Yeah, yeah they yeah, called it. Yeah, they did. That's going to be Elijah Ellis' third foul. So Grimes is going back to the charity stripe. What did you say, 29 points in the first half? 29 wow. in the first half. He gets a two-shot here coming up. He was 7 of 9 from the charity stripe in the first half. Mm -hmm. Grimes, number 15, 6, 8. 200 pounds. That's the first What is that, points. 8 of 10 at free throw? I don't know. She said 7 of 9 in the first half. Yep. There we go. Makes oh. the second. 9 of 11. 9 of 11 free throws. That's something they've definitely been yeah, working on struggled. too, Kim. Lady Comets have struggled from the charity stripe as well. They certainly have. You mentioned mm -hmm. Lady Comets, Morris Catholic, Clayton, John Wall, Ladies Invitational. Uh. Later on this afternoon from Cary Academy. we got a ball out of play. Do we go back to the Comets? Yeah, Lathan Wilburn tried to save it for Cape Fear Christian and just rolled out of bounds and back to the Comets. 58-27. Walt, it looks like they're just trying to slow down the tempo now, Kim. You got a big lead. You're just running the clock down. You're not really trying to rush to, to, yeah, to like put the ball in the basket. In their same rhythm you know. that they had in the first half, especially when you're not executing yet so far here in the second half. Walter Sorrell. Not, not in the same way you did. In the first half. Feels like there's a block See, on that that's basket what there. Access need denied, to do. right? Yeah, that's so what that that's <laughs> that, I mean, they're doing it right now. Cape Fear is they were doubling him in the paint. Yeah. They were closing out the paint. But you can't slap at his arms at, for a shot contest because, I mean, you're not – you need to block it when they try to pass it to him, not when he's shooting it. And, and guess who's going right back to the line again to shoot? <laughs> that's going to be Andrew Grimes making the first – I think they called that foul. 
I don't Elijah. I thought they caught it on 24 because yep. that's why he's coming out. Yep. Yeah. And that's going to be his fourth. Oh, and Grimes misses the the second. Okay, right now, 59-27 the score. Kim Winslow will chalk Wesley Outland, Nathan Outland, my son on video production. We welcome you to coverage on CRN of the John Jacobs Christmas Classic. The men are playing. They're doing really good after a nice holiday break for Christmas. Zeke Brock takes a little pump and fake. A shot for three, no good. For the rebound with the Comets, he's going to come up with the number four of Henson. Henson to Thompson. And they're doing oh, great, that uh, except for that bad play right Although there. Although I don't even think. Xavier Lawrence was wide open in the corner. Dana Thompson throws it to the corner, and Xavier Lawrence cuts to the back basket after he throws it. And then he said, hey, and buddy, was, you good? And it was thrown pretty high, too. And, and Xavier's. <laughs> Xavier's wasn't going to get that. Oh. Never. That was thrown a little But, I mean, high. I understand, because that's Xavier's signature spot, the corner, yep. catch and shoot. But I oh, don't. Oh, oh nice deflection there by Kilpatrick Kim to Hanson. Open and man and two to Thompson. Yes. Dana Thompson, what a great job there. And it started with Kilpatrick just putting that little hand in there to we stop nice that ball. Block. Yep. A block. Brock, Ooh. one. And it falls in. 61-29. Three minutes left to go here in the third period. Another job there. By, oh, wow. He was just... That I was a nice was. shot. That was number four. That was Jeremiah Henson. He was sideways, but he put the ball in the net. Yeah, 21 returns the favor for uh, Kate Fear and puts the ball in. Lakeland Wilburn. Will. I was going to say, I was looking at Max Preps the other day for our stats. The Comets averaged 63 points a game, and they're already at that in the third quarter. Yeah, that's awesome. One low-scoring game oh. uh, recently oh. against the Bulldogs. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Dana Thompson there tried to anticipate. And jumped right on the back <laughs> of uh, Brandon Searles. So that's going to put Searles at the line for two. That'll be Dana Thompson's first foul of the game. Make sure, make sure he's good there. I don't think he's going to come out and get checked out by the coach, Coach Everson Simmons, in his second year full time as the coach for the Comets. Timeout, and we got a timeout going to be called. Back to the free throw line for the Eagles when we return 63-31. John Jacobs Christmas Classic on the Community Radio Network from Cleveland. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Time out about to come to an end here. 63-31. Welcome back. Don't forget, coming up later on this afternoon, 3.45 Eastern time from Cary Academy. It is the opening round of the 50th John Wall Holiday Invitational. Coach Marlon Lee and the Lady Clayton Comets take on Denville, New Jersey, Moore's Catholic Crusaders. Oh. Ooh, I'm surprised that was Ooh, nice come up there with it like by, by John Henson, though. Henson grabs and add on the points. What's he at? 33, I think 35. it is. 35. Uh, let's see, that's 33 for 35. Wow. 34. 34, 34 now. We're almost, at that, we're almost at that 40-point running clock, I believe. The running clock will go into effect after 40 oh, points. They're going to call a foul on Grimes. Ran into Zeke Brock. That's just going to be Grimes' first foul of the game. And, Kim, you got to remember, when you're doing tournament play, you're, you're, you're playing three, four consecutive days. You gotta be competitive, but you gotta keep your energy. You can't get fatigued so fast after the first game. Zeke Brock for three, comes up short. And we've seen that happen yeah. for men and women. Well, yeah, when they've had back-to-back -back games. Yeah. And kind of see a little fatigue. This is why it's good that Comets are gonna be able to play a lot of players today. And you can rest Zeke up Brock. later on this afternoon as well because it's a morning game. Zeke Brock. With another two for Cape Fear Christian. Well, that and for our comments, 
standpoint, you don't want to be stupid out here and get anybody injured when right. you don't need to. You're up right. by 30, That's 30 right. something. So bring in 32. the second, third string players. Let them get a chance to see things. Xavier Lange for three, and it's good. Look at that, man. Xavier Lange. That's his six points. I think he's got three three no. pointers. No, that's two that's threes. ten points for him. He had yeah. seven in the first half. That's awesome. By the way, I want to say a big thank you to also um, Mr. Uh, Derek Lange. As the ball falls back out and it's short. Number two. Will Kilpatrick. Yep. I want to say a big thank you, by the way, to Derek Lange. Uh, he did a phenomenal job the other day calling the game with me for Southeast Raleigh, and we will have him again. We might have him tomorrow, actually, for the for the uh, semifinal. Zeke Brock makes the first of two. Number one, Zeke Brock at the line. I will tell you, we'll do our best to try to cover both the men and the women, but the uh, the men's tournament and, of course, the semifinal for the women and the championship or the championship men and women's game will be the most important for the CRN coverage of the week. We will do our best to cover the John Wall Invitational for the Lady Comets as best as we can as a minute hey. comes up here on the third period. That's Henson for three. Just depends on the time frame of what Bracket Clayton and the Lady Comets end up into, but we will cover the opener Zeke. coming up later this afternoon. And Kim, there's another shot. Zeke Brock, that's 22 points for him. That's right. It seems like Ooh. this basket in front of us, the ball falls in so much more easier than the one at the right. Right? It's like access denied at the far end. But they're making Whoa. it work. Oh. Brian Harris dribbled into traffic. Pretty much had nowhere to go with it. Yeah, 24 of uh, Darian Braswell. Nice coverage for him. Uh, no, that's... No, that's no, not that's Braswell. Not Braswell. No, no, that Braswell. is not Braswell. He's not here today. Um, 24 is Cam Tucker today. Okay, Cam Tucker, my apologies. Zeke Brock gets the steal and the, and the basket. And Cam, Cam Tucker is one of the JV players, yep. correct? Yep. yep. Apologies on that. Darian Braswell, I think, is out with an injury on the varsity level. Launch with another shot for a three. That time the cylinder is short. That's the third. Oh! Whoa! Oh, Too bad count. that didn't count. I don't know who wow. just shot that. I think Xavier <laughs> Lange. No. Because it's down here at the Oh, set. down here. It's probably Zeke. Number one, I'm I I'm going to guess it was Zeke Brock. It went in. That's all I know. It was like three-quarter. That was, a, that was a, a, a dead air, a shock, a gasp, and an awe. <laughs> oh, we go to the fourth next. It is a 40-point lead. 30-point 30, 30 30 lead. I'm sorry. 71-41 as we move into period at number four next here at Cleveland. If you love them enough to turn off your music and pretend like their music is your music. Ah, oh, this is mommy's jam. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Let's play it again. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. We'll oh. be back, and Merry Christmas, even though Christmas is over. Hey, Will, how about our Steelers, buddy? You see, I've got my Steelers collar. Oh, yeah. Oh. Dream is still alive. We're humba still alive. Humba 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 humba. Still alive. I wore my Steelers beanie here. It's in the car. Yes. We're ready so, now for, for the fourth period. Kim, did you hey, see that football game hey, on Saturday? Yes, I did. That was a we great game. Here, Christian Academy, they actually kept up with the comments there in the third quarter, actually outscoring them 19-18. to 18. So they're going to look for more of that here in the third That's quarter. That's right. Basket by Brandon Searles. I was so depressed on Saturday night. I was like, oh, my God, we're going out by the Raiders. Are you yeah, serious? I thought I thought the lose. miracle, the 50th anniversary and of the Immaculate uh, Reception and then the miracle on Saturday night. Anthony Walters with three. We got the Ravens this week. That's right. <laughs> Sunday night football, Sunday we're going to win. Football. It's going to be a fun one. they got to win it. I think Lamar Jackson's coming back, too, so it's going to be interesting. That's right. And See, look at that. Brock takes it to the – Another He's two. a talent, Kim. Number one's oh, yeah. good. Again, he's for a junior. 35 points a game. For a junior? Yeah. He's a junior, right? Junior, number number yeah. one. You're exactly right. Another shot for three. Short out of bounds. Yeah, out of winner. play. There you go. This just makes this game fly by faster so we can pack up and go to carry. We can pack up. Me, Nathan, can pack up and go to carry. Kim, you're going shopping today, right? I just got to run an errand after it, but so, I have a, a like Christmas dinner tonight. <laughs> 
Hey, Will, you got another Christmas engagement as well, right? Yeah, I got one uh, later this week. Oh, Whoa. the Crocs are going to get fouled. That's a three-shot foul, ain't it? Yes, by S.J. Sorrell. Oh, also tonight, my uh, East Carolina Pirates play. That's Coastal right, Carolina. yes. I'm going to be able to watch that football game, Birmingham. actually. It starts yeah. at 6.30, 7 o'clock. 6.45, yeah. 6.45. Yeah, 6.45. Football, Pirates in the bowl game. It's going to be a good game. I was reading something the other day where it sounds like in the next two years, possibly by 2025, ECU Pirates will be a part of the ACC. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen. It's there's too many conversations think, are going on about it. I think there's too many teams already in the North ACC Carolina. from North Carolina. Yeah. There's four. That's too many. I'm surprised they even let four in. Well, well I think they Zeke, got – yeah. Zeke Brock makes all three of his. I think – the Pirates need to stay where they're at, and then in a few years when Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston leave, we're going to get a conference championship in football. I think ECU is better than Conference USA or whatever conference that they're in now. They're an American Me, athletic. Yeah, I don't like yeah. – They're 7-5, and five, I mean. Mitchell on the miss, oh. and then he gets fouled on the putback. But basket no good. That's right. College football is certainly going to be interesting in a few years because, I mean, USC, UCLA is going to go to the Big 12. The Pac-12 is going to go into shambles. Mitchell going to the free throw line. I can't. I couldn't see who they called him. Whether it was uh, yeah, twenty one. I, I, I think it was on twenty one. I think it was on Lathan Wilburn. Mitchell makes the first. That's his first points. Of yeah, the he's game. out there. Twenty one is. I just couldn't see. And the wow, there you go, Mitchell, looking good as well. Mitchell made a pretty big slam dunk in the game against the Bulldogs of Southeast Raleigh the other week was ago. Was that was that him that made the dunk? I was listening. Grimes but I could and never, Mitchell. Yep. Could never tell. Also, I don't know if that's a foul. I mean, uh, I think there's a new rule where if you shoot it after a foul is called, you can get called for a technical foul. But I don't know. That might just be. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's a new foul, a new rule. I didn't know that. 76-49 right now the score, and the uh, Eagles are trying to keep themselves from it not going into that 40-point running clock to make this game go to the full distance here. Brandon Searles goes one for two at the line. Mitchell, Searle, Searle, going to Mitchell again. Anthony Walters for three, that was way long. Yes, air ball. Nice move by Zeke Brock into uh, number 21, Lathan Wilborn. Eaton. Short, rebound, got it back, oh. slapped again. Mitchell got it, basket and one. That's how you drive and don't give up, Kim. Yeah, he was fighting under there under the basket. They're going to call that on number 10, Trevor McLam. I think they will. 78-51 score. And they're going to send Mitchell back to the line again. Justice Mitchell, first ever varsity he tips he got. Kim was right here last year at the John yeah. Jacobs Invitational. First time playing varsity. Here goes now Sorrell all over Sheck. And of course, number one, what a talent player he is. Brock, I'm sorry, Zeke Brock. Going out to 15, inside, no one home. Wilborn misses the shot. Yes. Comets come up with the rebound. Mitchell. Finish. Oh. Can't. Got a rebound back, though. This time oh. it will not go in. I thought it was going to go in that time, and it doesn't get fouled. Gonna They're going to say draw a foul here. Oh, okay. They called a foul charge. On Mitchell. No, they, they called a, a, a charge? They called a foul on Mitchell. It's a one and one at the line, by the way, also. He motioned that it was a charge when he was going up for a rebound. I don't – I think he meant over the back. I don't really know what I, I think yeah, Mitchell's kind of like, I don't know why either. I don't yeah, I think it was over. Brian Harris checks in for Sorrell. This will bring Trevor McLam to the line to shoot. By the way, you are not watching Cleveland and Clayton. This is Cape Fear. Christian Academy Eagles wearing Cleveland jerseys, dark jerseys, because Clayton and Cape Fear were supposed to wear white on white with their home colors, and they had to not make that. That would have been a disaster, Kim, right? I mean, Trying to keep track of everybody, yes. Oh, tries to get over the defender's high pass to Harris, who kicks shot. it out to Walters, and Walters misses that three-pointer with an air ball. There you go, Walters. 
And I got to say, big props thanks to, to uh, Cleveland for letting Clayton be the home seat, if you will, because we are in Clayton. We are. This is kind of our home house. Hometown. In this hometown, yes. Yeah. Oh, Brian, Brian Harris, Harris with the steal. Yeah. Maybe a dunk. I know Harris. he can do it. Is he there? Oh. Layups instead Layup. puts it in. I know I know he can do it. I've seen him do it before. But And Kim, Cape Fear Christian Academy, you, you think that name would be something that you would hear at the ocean, which you would, Cape Fear. Hello. But they're out of Irwin, which is basically where Triton, Triton High School, Irwin area, kind of the the Sand Hills region of North Carolina. Really? Is that? Yeah, Irwin is, yeah. I didn't see who they called it on. Uh, they called it on um, number one. They um, called it on one oh, of Mr. Oh, Brock. He's no, no, no. Or no, Walters. 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 Yeah, Walters. 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 Joe Patrick checked in for Walters. We're going to bring in uh, possibly Derek Lange tomorrow to call the semifinals for us. Kim's got things going on. Will's got things going on. Keep Kevin Stump in your thoughts and prayers. Bruce Barrett as well. People got to work. People celebrating the holidays. I understand Blake Robertson is tearing down Christmas ornaments finally. <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom told me we weren't right. taking it down until after uh, New, New Year's. Year's. That's what that, yeah, that's what I was told. <laughs> Mitchell, two. There nice fader in and two. Yeah, got it in. After being held scoreless for the first three quarters, he's now got seven here in the fourth quarter. Look at that. And driving number one, Z Brock. Oh, oh nice, block. nice deflection there. Nice no, no. Blocked by Kilpatrick. Yeah, good job there. Good to see Will back in the house. They call him Diggs. Harris, Just dig. short. Dig. Just dig. 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 Oh, dig. Okay. Oh, Mitchell. Oh! oh they Technical Tech. foul because he hung on the rim. As a tech. Because he hung on the rim. That's right. But I think that was a little bit too technical to be called. I mean, yeah. he was swinging his momentum. He couldn't. There's no way. If he would have let go, he would have face planted. A technical foul uh, being called here on Justice Mitchell. This will send, obviously, their star player for Cape Fear Christian Academy Eagles. Zeke Brock to the line to shoot two. And they will get the possession back as well for the Eagles, Kim. Yep, on the technical, they get free throws and possession. And he makes them both. Yeah, I mean... I understand he was hanging on the rim, but if he would have let go right, he when he jumped, he would have he would have fell on his head. It's just dangerous. I mean, I do agree with the rule, but not the the call. You gotta know the intent. Yeah. If he would have made it, it would have been a totally different story. That's exactly right. Dig gets the steal. Oh, oh. Three and a half, Mitchell. Oh, Mitchell. He, he tried it again. They're going to call a foul this time on Mitchell. No. <laughs> yeah, they are. No, yeah, they're not. Uh, they're going to call it a they 10. It on the, yeah. 10 of the uh, kick Big fear Lamb. of McClam. Yeah. This will send Mitchell to the line to get his two shots back for the technical. Mitchell there. Ready? 23. So that's 0 for 2 on the dunks for, for Mitchell today. Yes. 6'5", 200 pounds for the sophomore. He tried to do a one-handed dunk that time, though. Simone will add that to his highlight reel. <laughs> and that will go. I don't think so. One out no. of two there. No. Didn't he make both? Yeah, he made both. He made. Oh, he did yeah. make both. He did. Yeah. Still a 30-point game, though, Will. They can't break that 40-point bracket yet. Yeah, not yet. They seem to slip up a little bit on their defense. Kim, is this the most points the Comets have had this year offensively, too, I'm thinking? Had to be. 85 points. Here we go. Here we go, Grimes. He's ready. He yeah, goes! Show you how it's it. done! <laughs> he's he's going to tell Mitchell, and he did that one-handed. Andrew that, Grimes. And that's Andrew Grimes' first points of the fourth quarter. Yes. Yeah, he hasn't he's, played this fourth no. quarter very much. He's going to look over at Mitchell and say, that's how you do it. Walk this way. All right, Dig. Oh, and he gets the block here at the other end. Eighty-seven fifty-five score. Moving in now to the final. Three minutes under three minutes of regulation here in this game, in this tournament. The men will move in to the what is unofficially the semifinal round tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 Eastern Time. They will take on either South Garner Titans or Rocky Mount Griffins. Clayton might go for the 100. Yeah, and they're pretty close. More. Man, would that be something they could do at? Like, seriously. Uh, oh, might. I was going to say. Jump ball. Nope, they're going to go get the foul. Will, do you have enough time to go into triple digits with oh, yeah. two minutes remaining? Time. 
You could you could easily score 12 points in one minute. Let alone you got two minutes and 19 seconds with free throws coming up. And Grimes back at the line again. And he makes it. Hands down, Kim Winslow, star player of the game here for the opening round of the tournament. It's got to be Andrew Grimes, oh, number absolutely. 15. Well, that, how many points does he have off free throws? At least 15. I want to say at least 10. I know at least 10. We know Kim will tally it up before it's all over with. That's his 12th made free throw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's going to contribute to a lot of his points today. And he's missed, what, three or four? That's it? Three. Wow. So he's 12 for 15 for, yep. for free throws today. Driving, 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 doing good. Yeah, there's Brandon Searles for two. Still a 30-point lead, two minutes remaining. And Dig Will Kilpatrick back after a sickness. Uh, put him sideline for at least a week or so. Missed the last couple of games. He missed the Cleveland game, the Enloe game, and the, the Southeast Raleigh game. Putting him back. Launch around the circle, going Lange. to Harris. Oh, oh, he couldn't quite get it. I thought Launch was maybe going to take a look at that three-pointer, but he dished it off to, to Harris. Just driving, making it happen here in this tournament. Turnaround jumper for Wilborn is no good. Three-pointer for Zeke Brock. Of course it's there good. There you go. That's a talented player, hands down, right there. Not going to lie to you. That, that kid's got some definitely great ability to show what he can do in his career. Andrew Grimes with another two. That's what, 40 points, ain't it? Or more? <laughs> Woo, another minute to play, by the way. Three-pointer by Brandon Searles is good for Cape Fear Christian. And the clock will stop with 48 time, huh? seconds remaining. Don't forget, coming up later on this afternoon, 3.45 Eastern Time, we are live from the 50th annual John Wall Holiday Invitational. The Lady Comets will be taking on the Morris Catholic Crusaders out of New Jersey. Cam, and, and looking on the stats last night to prepare for that game, That's that, I think that's going to be an, a good matchup. Yeah, and I just want to comment here, since we don't have much time left, uh, comments were able to get in Bryce Stevens, Malachi Atkins, and Cam Tucker at that last timeout, so... Up. Letting everybody and play. Bryce Stevens dribbles into traffic in the lane and, and turns the ball over. And Bryce Stevens is the uh, brother of, of Brent uh, Bryn. Bryn Stevens, who plays on varsity yep. level. Yes. Yeah. Is Bryce on JV? No. No, he's, no, he's on he's varsity. On varsity. He's, yeah. I don't know what he just. I, I understand. He said charge. Oh, on somebody on the inbound. Elbow. Um, I'm guessing Zeke, Zeke yep. might have pushed off on the inbound, pushed off of a defender trying to get the ball, get some space. Didn't work out for him. So the Comets are going to go to 6-5 and five now, which is uh, still a win in the overall. They're in the conference at 1-1. 2-1. One one. Or 2-1, and one actually, yeah. Um, they beat the number one seed Bulldogs the other night. Cam Tucker. And Cam that's Tucker. number 24. Look at that. Oh, 24. I'm sorry. Yeah, we kept saying Braswell as well, no, but no, it's no, Cam no. Tucker. No, I, I said I thought it was 34. There you go, number one again. And he and it fall ball falls in by Zeke Brock. And that's going to be the ball game. Couldn't get close to 100 points. Oh. But the game's over, 93-68 the final. There you go. When it's all said and done, 93-68 the final. Comets will go down to 6-5. and 5-6 five. Five and for the Cape Fear Christian Academy team out of the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic North Carolina Independent School Athletic Association. And... Uh, Kim will tally the book here real quickly, and we will settle it in and call it a day here. And uh, Will, a big win for the Comets. Again, uh, a strong effort finish. We mentioned that the other night. I think they're continuing to do that to the best of their ability here in this tournament. They got it done. They got a win. Yeah, I mean, that was actually the best the Comets have played all year so far. Probably might be one of the best games they play all year. Points-wise, you know, uh, not many teams put up 93 on average. But that'll certainly raise Clayton's points per game a little bit. Their average was like 63 coming into this game. 
And they got the win, and they move on to play South Carolina or Rocky Mount, which last year didn't the Comets end up playing Rocky Mount, and then they come back and won with Hugh Collins' effort. That's right. I remember that. I wasn't here. I was in Maryland. But I listened to the game. Well, yeah. Weren't we down like 15? Yes. And came back and won yeah, from Hugh Collins' effort. Yeah, the Cleveland men, Clayton, came back and beat Rocky Mount to go to the championship game against Cleveland, and then Cleveland beat us in the final. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The ladies played Rocky Mount. And lost. And lost. And they played Cleveland in the third place tournament game. Last year it was Clayton ladies, Clayton Cleveland ladies for third place, yeah, and, and then the championship for the men. Yeah, because they uh, so. played each other, what, four times, boys and women? Or? Yes, yes, because if you count the two conference games, the tournament and, and conference. the conference tournament, they played each other, Kim. Yeah. You got the final tally of everything? I do. Yeah. Of course, the comments come up. Big winner, 93-68 over the Cape Fear Christian Academy. And I don't mean to cut you off. Is that the most offensive points they've ever had this season so far for Clayton? I believe so. I, don't, I haven't looked. I haven't been to yeah, every I, game, I so I don't have all yeah, I, can I load, think it I is. Can load, I can load. But yeah. Cape Fear Christian Academy was led, of course, by Zeke Rock. He scored 38, uh, so three over his average, and he was followed by Brandon Searles with gotcha. 19. For the Comets, they were led, no surprise, Andrew Grimes scored <laughs> 40 in that wow. game and he sat a lot in the fourth quarter he only scored six there in, in the fourth quarter uh, but then behind Grimes was uh, Justice Mitchell with nine and uh, Anthony Walters with how nine as well how many did he end up having 90 uh, he had 40 he had 40 um, 69 but Thomas Clayton. scored 93 tallying Clayton. up points here offensively Clayton did put up 79 against East Wake, but that's the most they put up until yeah, now. So until tonight, so that's the, this but again, they, this morning. Actually. They did a great job feeding it into to Grimes, and Grimes did a fantastic job at the at the line tonight. Yeah, and that's where Comets have struggled a little bit at the free throw line. I believe for as a team, uh, they are only shooting. I think I wrote down 60. Yeah, 65 percent. And Grimes himself, I think we said, was 12 of 15 or something like that. Yeah. Well, they move on to the, uh, what would you call it, the semifinals tomorrow afternoon, 5.30. They will either face the South Garner Titans or the Rocky Mount Griffins. That game will be coming up later on this afternoon. Matter of fact, coming up next after game number three. As you are watching on the video feed between Middle Creek and Rocky Mount, the ladies game is coming up again. They do ladies, men, ladies, men, ladies, men, ladies, men. Game four will again be with South Corner and Rocky Mount. The winner of that game will face Clayton in the semifinals. Cape Fear Christian Academy will now move into the loser. For, I don't like to say the word loser. The consolation bracket for third place. They'll play for the opportunity to go to the third place in the tournament. And uh, again, by the way, coming up on for Thursday, we will have CRN coverage of any Clayton comments action. Hopefully Clayton will take it all the way to the ship. But we always, for like the fifth year now, cover the women's championship finale and the men's oh. game as well, as Nathan, I guess, is ready to get off the air as well. Um, Kim, your final take of this game and a big win for the Comets again. I think, as we said, it was a, a big win. Put a lot of points on the board, and, and they were just very efficient getting it inside. Um, got a little bit more out of sync in the in the second half. You know, we were hoping we'd get to that 40-point level. Um, but again, they were able to get some uh, additional players in, get some minutes, um, and that could pay off down the road uh, as the season progresses. And Kim will uh, hopefully be back with us on Thursday for the championship yes. game. But we'll hope you have a great Christmas holiday. You and Scott have a great date night tonight for his Christmas holiday as yeah. well. I just have a Christmas dinner with family. But, yeah, see, nice Christmas, family we're dinner. not done. The dinners are not done. You're getting ready to leave as well. Will, your yeah. final take of this game. And again, I think it's finished the other night, carrying this momentum to continue is what they're doing again here in this tournament. Well, like we said, Andrew Grimes did put up 40, but I think uh, what teams are going to notice if they go back and watch film from the Corinth game, I remember, Corinth had him, they were man-to-man, -man, and Corinth forced him to go out in the corners where the paint was wide open with no big man down there, and it was wide open in the paint every time. So I think some teams are going to pick up on that, but it was a good quality win for the Comets today, and uh, Terry, I um, meant Cape Fear Academy just couldn't finish. 93-68, the final, but it's all said and done. This has been a presentation of the Community Radio Network and CRN Sports. Follow us at CRN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at CRN Sports. All Clayton Comets Athletics as well. We're back in Cary in about three hours' time. We're 3.45 Eastern time with coverage of the John Wall Christmas Holiday Invitational for the Lady Clayton Comets. 
taking on Morris Catholic out of New Jersey. The Crusaders in the women's game opener as well. Final score, 93-68 for all of our crew on behalf of everyone. Uh, thanks to uh, my son Nathan Outlet on the video production, filling in for Jackie. Thanks always to Will Chalk and Kim Winslow, all of our staff. For John Asmus and Marlon Lee, the athletic directors of Clayton Athletics. Thanks also to interim principal Dr. Earl Moore. For Brian Hale, the Clayton Commons Athletic Booster President, I'm Wesley Outland. They go to the semifinals. It's either South Garner or Rocky Mount. We'll have it tomorrow afternoon, 5.30 Eastern Time. Coverage will begin at 5.15 from Cleveland in the John Jacobs Christmas Classic Invitational presented by Uplift Tees on the Community Radio Network. Be good to one another. Enjoy the rest of your day. We're back in less than four hours' time with coverage from Cary Academy for the women and the John Wall Invitation as the men get it done here today in round one at Cleveland. You've been listening to an exclusive presentation of the Community Radio Network, WCRN 87.9 FM, Clayton Garner, Raleigh, North Carolina, USA. We are CRN. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.